So, Mihai, I, um, you know, I, I quite often I'm asked about uh, information security. One of the things that I've discovered is that there's a lot of misconceptions and beliefs out there in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my favorite things that I like to hear is that, well, you know, I'm a small business and uh, who wants my stuff or mm -hmm. my line of business? Nobody is interested in me. Why would anybody want to attack me? Right. So the, you know, the investment that these companies make tends to be nil or none, or they don't really seem to think about information security seriously enough. Mm -hmm. You know, but the truth really is, that uh, every organization, every company, and even for that matter, personal um, uh, personal people or accounts, mm -hmm. they tend to not realize that they are a target. Everybody yeah. is, an, is a target. So if you're not a target, you've been breached. I mean, that's the absolute truth. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason for that is because there's been a lot of changes, obviously, with inside of um, the way that attacks happen. Years and years ago, attacks were very targeted. The cost of the attack was very high. Um, but today, what we're seeing as a fundamental shift is that um, there t there's attempts to get uh, monetary gain, quick monetary gain. So there's a lot of drive-by um, cyber attacks, low-cost attacks, and the hopes of being able to be able to retrieve money from organizations. I mean, here's some sobering statistics. You know, the truth is that um, most companies, by the time they've been breached, the attacker's been within inside of their organization for a minimum of 146 days. Mm -hmm. So the attacker generally, once they've made the, um, the connection into the environment, they will sit, lie in wait, and during that period of time, they're doing things like evaluating your network, collecting usernames and passwords, trying to collect emails to see if there's anything going on. Um, so for example, we had one customer that was fell within this particular realm and the it was during a, um, a, a corporate move. And during that move, uh, there was some fictitious emails that were sent out stating that they would like to close the existing accounts as part of this as this move was taking place now these emails came apparently from the ceo now that ceo obviously did not send those emails but all the accounts being closed that money was then funneled offshore and away we go and as a matter of fact in this particular instance the company was low profile but it was an opportunistic play by the attacker to be able to take that money away from you know any of that particular organization 63 percent of all attacks start from the compromising user credentials and there's a lot of different ways of being able to do that phishing attacks is a very popular method um, but at the end of the day it is user credentials that are the weak points the other two numbers uh, the 500 billion and the 3.8 million are US numbers, but um, you can see the, the impact that uh, a lack of information security has on organizations. So what's the answer? I mean, the truth is information security is not about protection. I mean, yes, we absolutely want to be able to delay the attack, but truthfully, at the end of the day, if an attacker has enough time and has the means, their attack will be successful. So what, what are we to do? Well, first and foremost, you, the defender, needs to have a budget. I mean, you truly have to have a security budget and understand that information security, like any other aspect of your business and doing business, requires a budget and it has to be a committed budget. You also have to be able to have um, time and attention allocated to being able to identify or look for any sort of suspicious behavior. Without this, it doesn't matter what tools you have in place, the attack will be successful eventually. By ensuring that you have the budget and the time allocated to this, I mean, you can expect to have a opportunity to delay and defer attacks. What your true objective is for the majority of cases and the majority of organizations out there is you're looking to ruin the attacker's return on investment. So for an attacker, the return is a successful attack. They've got what they want, whether it's um, you know, a list of uh, identities, so usernames, passwords, email addresses, 
or maybe it is uh, you know direct monetary gain. Um, on this particular point, I just wanted to mention that usernames and passwords are worth money. So when you look on the dark web, um, there's opportunities for to purchase uh, usernames and passwords so that other individuals can log in and maybe steal uh, intellectual property or be able to sit and wait and see what kind of financial gain they can get. So on average, um, at least the last bit of information I received, each email address, uh, username and password, um, and again, it depends on the profile of the organization, but you can expect to receive anywhere between two and five dollars for each one of those email pass passwords. So you can see that, you know, if you're talking hundreds of people, um, there is quite a bit of a uh, return for the potential attacker. The investment for the attacker is the cost of the attack. So if they're trying to attack your particular organization, um, they're doing some drive-by shootings, and they're trying to penetrate your defenses, at the end of the day, if you're too much of a pain, they'll just move on to the next victim. Because at the end of the day, they will find somebody who doesn't have the same level of defense. Your objective here in most cases is to be able to slow the attacker down and just make it inconvenient for them to try and penetrate your defenses. So in this particular case, um, or this slide here, is showing you what the, um, the likelihood of an attack is. So most, major most attackers tend to use commonly available um, scripts and exploits that are well known on the internet. By not patching your environment or not having the, the proper security protocols in place, it makes it very easy for these known vulnerabilities to be exploited within your particular environment. These are low cost attacks, and this is what you'll find the vast majority of uh, attacks are today. On the other hand, there's custom attacks. Custom attacks are very, very high cost, and there's a, but there's a low likelihood of use. These custom attacks are generally used for targeted individuals. So for example, if you were trying to attack Microsoft, um, knowing that Microsoft would have some good defenses in place, you would need to be you need to make a heavy investment in different methodologies. Um, these are low, low, likelihoods, low likelihood of use, but if you know your organization and you know your profile and you understand these risks, then you can make an informed decision as to where you most likely would sit within this area and the type of investment you would need to make as far as uh, information security is concerned. So what's the answer? Well, truthfully, at the end of the day, um, one of the first things I always recommend is an independent assessment. Now, an independent assessment is important because if you are not doing the assessment by a third party, then it's like, you know, the fox watching the hen house. Your information security process will remain the same, unchanged, without any external influence. You really want somebody to come in who is fresh to the environment, has a fresh set of eyes to be able to understand what it is that you're doing and to be able to make new and informed recommendations. At ProServer IT, our um, assessment process is as follows. One of the first things that we do is we conduct a meeting to discuss your uh, infrastructure, to discuss your culture, um, your environment, and what you hope to gain out of the uh, security implementation. This is extremely important because unlike most technology solutions where you drop an appliance in like a firewall or maybe a new switch or router or server and you spin it up and away you go, information security has a direct impact on a user's day-to-day -day life. So we truly need to understand what the right solutions are for your culture. In some cases, it may be um, not advantageous to implement certain solutions because the impact on your business would be too high. So understanding your culture, understanding the way that you work, and understanding what solutions fit that particular, that, that particular um, group of things is extremely important. 
Next, we do an analysis on your Microsoft infrastructure. So whether you're using Office 365 Secure Score or the Azure Security Center, um, we gain information on that. Well, we also look at your on-premise environment to see what um, servers you have in play, the configuration of that uh, of your of your environment, and we collect all this data and aggregate it. From there, we build the assessment report. So the assessment report will be broken up into three main sections. The first part is visibility. We really need you to understand what your the state of your security is and what risks you currently have with inside of your environment. The second thing is we'll talk about um, policies. Now it's important to note that technology is there to support policies and not the other way around. You truly have to have a pol policies in place and, and be able to define them amongst your users so that adherence to what, whatever controls you have are there. And then we take the technology and apply it to those particular controls. And finally, guidance. Guidance is an important part. We're there to help guide you through the uh, solutions and the products that are available there. But import, most importantly, if you're currently leveraging Office 365 or uh, Azure, uh, Secure Score is one tool that you can use that is continuously evolving to show that where your weaknesses and recommended implementations are. Keeping in mind that the attackers are not static. It's not necessarily the same attack over and over again. So maintaining an information database and a dynamic way of being able to identify what the current risks are and what the risks to your environment are is imperative. So as a next step, I would highly recommend that you have a security assessment performed. The security assessment is there to help inform you as to what your environment stands and the risks that you're currently facing. Even if you choose not to move forward with any security implementation at this point in time, understanding your risks is an invaluable investment. Currently, we have funding available for limited, limited time only. Um, Microsoft is uh, helping us subsidize some of these assessments. So between now and June 30th, if you have, uh, if you are interested in having an assessment done, we highly recommend that you contact us as soon as possible.